your transition to People's Remote Deposit Capture product. Our goal was to make your transition to People's as seamless and transparent as possible. We're very proud of our suite of electronic banking products and services. In fact, we have all the products and service capabilities of our larger regional and national competitors, and we're competitively advantaged over most of our community bank peer group. We're also excited to be part of your communities, and we look forward to a bright future together. We appreciate and value the business we do together today, and we look forward to expanding our relationships as opportunities arise in the future. Finally, we thank you for the confidence that you've displayed in National Bank and Trust and in Peoples by choosing to bank with us. And I commit to you that we will work hard day in and day out to make this transition as smooth as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Um, and now at this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Um, our speaker for the presentation today is Sandy DeLong. She is Vice President of Treasury Management and Public Funds here at People's Bank. Sandy has over 25 years of banking experience, 17 of those years being here at People's Bank um, in the Treasury Management Department. She's an AAP, which is an accredited ACH professional. And Sandy also works with our companies, uh, larger companies, to improve cash flow. She can help to control disbursements and helps just the overall management um, of our clients' working capital. Um, I'd like to hand it over to Sandy this time. Um, thank you, Jordan, and thank you, Ed. Uh, welcome all. We're excited to have you as clients of People's Bank. Uh, we're going to talk today about a conversion update and then show you a brief product demo, um, and then we'll go to a question and answer session. Um, this uh, webinar most likely will only last about uh, probably 30 to 45 minutes at the most. Um, so at the end, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand or type in a question. Thank you. Uh, this should look familiar to you. Many of you are using the Panini My Vision X. Uh, many of our clients use the Ideal, which is a single scan feeder. Um, your scanners will work with our system, which is wonderful. You're very familiar with them now. Um, a couple things I want to mention to you is, one, if you haven't already heard, um, March 9th is the, um, the conversion date for uh, to become People's Bank, and you'll start using um, your new remote deposit capture sign-on. Um, just a couple things, phase one, uh, March 2nd through March 9th, and then there's phase two, March 9th, and beyond. Uh, you should have received a welcome packet uh, the week of uh, February 2nd. That includes a lot of information in it about your accounts and which, you know, where your account's converting. Uh, you might want to refer back to that packet. If you have not received that packet, please let us know and we can get another one out to you immediately. Um, the second um, bit of information that was mailed to you was on February 12th. Um, these are for our more advanced uh, Treasury Management product users. Um, that information um, would have contained more information about your remote, remote deposit capture um, product and how the conversion will go for that, and also information about business online banking if you are a online banking client as well. Uh, the RDC clients should attend a webinar, which you are today, to learn more about remote deposit capture. And People's Bank employees or People's Bank former employees will be contacting you to let you know your login information. Phase two, um, all clients will be using uh, People's Bank Remote Deposit Capture. It'll be available on Monday, March 9th. All clients will need to make sure their Java, these are two really important things that you'll need to know. Um, our system is very dependent on Java, so please make sure that your Java is up to date. and. Uh, you will need to download your new drivers, which I will talk you through that here in just a moment. The existing National Bank and Trust Remote Deposit Capture site will then be disabled. How do you prepare for this change in addition to attending this training? Um, we recommend that you review the end user guide. Uh, many of you might have been provided that by Mary Jane West, who is our Treasury Management Representative for the market area that you're in. Uh, you can also view this product webinar. The good news is, is that this is being recorded along with the material. will all be placed out on a welcome site that was specifically designed for you as an MBNT client. It's welcome to peoplesbank.com backslash MBNT 
I highly recommend that you go out to that site. We're trying to keep you informed of anything that's going on um, with the conversion. And you can also ver verify user information is accurate in the new system once you log in on March 9th. These are the workstation requirements for our remote deposit capture system. It's rare that a client cannot access our system. Um, I will just let you know, though. However, if you're a Mac user, um, Macs don't always are don't always work well with our system. Um, you definitely would like would like to have your Adobe Acrobat Reader um, updated. Uh, that comes into play when you're looking and reviewing reports in our uh, remote deposit capture system. And then as well, like I mentioned before, Java is really critical in our system, so if you'll just make sure your, your Java has been up to date. Second part of the workstation requirements, uh, most browsers um, are able to be used in our system. The newest Google Chrome is not recommended at this point. I think it's um, 40. Um, it's not recommended at the moment. We had a client ask that question just the other day. Um, and then, of course, your scanner is a certified scanner. However, if you have other scanners, just make sure that they're one of the ones that are certified on this list, please. So let's talk a little bit about more about remote deposit capture. It still gives you the capability that you currently have today to scan your check from your desktop and electronically send those to people's banks. The login information, you will receive an office name, which is generally your business name. It could be abbreviated if your business name is very long. A login ID, which is specific to you as a user, and a temporary password that you will be given. You'll put those into the system and click on Continue. Uh, we do have multi-factor authentication within our system, multiple layers. One of the things you'll be asked to do one time is you will you will create a challenge three challenge questions. They have to, the question has to be anywhere from forty to sixty characters long, and the answer has to be at least four characters long. So if you create the question, what's my favorite color, and it's red, that is not going to work. So if you can see on the next screen, this is just an example of possible um, questions that you might create. Once you create these questions, you're going to click on do not ask me personal verification questions at this computer. It should create a cookie on your, your computer. Um, and you should not be asked these questions unless you, you, you change computers or your system erases cookies. The next multi-factor authentication um, that we have set up in this system is you're going to create a, a website authentication phrase. Um, it's got to be 60 to 80 characters in this box. You're going to choose a color scheme from the top bar and a color scheme from the bottom bar. Make sure it's not black. Um, and then click on Save. This comes into play when it just confirms that you are on the correct website. And if for some reason you accidentally enter the office login information wrong or the password, it, basically it's going to come up with a phrase that you did not set up and a different color scheme um, that you did not set up. So just try to re-enter your office login and password. The next thing I, I mentioned is do not ask these questions from the computer. Hit submit. That way you're not um, bothered every time you, you log into this system. So once you get logged in, um, you should not have to do that um, multi-factor authentication um, any further unless you believe somebody has your, your questions and login information, then I would recommend that you can reset it. And I'll show you here in a moment where you reset that. But this is the look of our, our product. Um, there's um, it's Generally, the tabs are on the left. And then once you click on some of these tabs, you may have some um, tabs um, on the top of the screen. The first thing you're going to want to do, uh, one, I, like I mentioned, is update Java. But the second thing you're going to do when you first log into the system is you're going to download the drivers for your particular scanner. So you will go into documentation, choose the type of scanner you, are, you have, and, which I think almost all of you have the Panini My Vision. Then you're going to go and you're going to download those drivers. Um, if you would ever switch computers or switch the scanner to another computer, 
this is how you would get back in and download those drivers for the scanner. The scanner will not work without those drivers being downloaded to your workstation. Usually it only takes a few minutes, just depends on how fast your internet speed is. The second thing you might want to do is just review your profile screen just to make sure and confirm that your scanner types is Panini My Vision X. Um, if you ever need to reset your challenge questions um, or your multi-factor authentication, you can click that here. I've had people accidentally click it and they had to reset everything, but you can reset those questions here if you need to. The other part of this is that the user information should come over. Within our system, we do assign a security manager in the system, and that person is responsible for setting up and managing their users within their company. This is an example, and I would highly recommend that you review the access that each one of your users has in the system just to make sure it properly came over. If you want to set up a new uh, user, we're going to go through that process. You would click on User on the left-hand side, come to New Client User. The way our system works is that you have the ability to choose specific roles by location. Many of our customers have multiple locations, and they have multiple RDC users. Um, you can see here the Advanced Processing Officer generally has the ability to draft those transactions, where the approver would only have the ability to approve those transactions. So you could set up dual control within the system. The supervisor, as you can see to the right, has all access to everything that you set up um, with, with our company. Um, the manager is very similar to the supervisor, and many of my clients set their users up as managers so that they can draft and capture the batch and also approve that batch. And then you have the ability to set up just research officers. If they don't need to have the ability to scan those deposits and deposit, you may just want them to have the ability to go back and research things. So it's really up to you as the uh, security administrator to set up your users with the specific roles that they, you want them to have available. This is an example of um, just choosing the advanced processing officer, clicking on continue. And then you would choose what location. So like I mentioned before, many of my companies have multiple locations all over the United States. So they may only want that person to have access to that one particular location in the account to deposit, so it's not confusing for them. You would put the login name that you want them to have, their user full name, a login ID. It could be their first initial, last name, whatever you would like to do, or it could just be their first name a password, a temporary password, and I would choose for them to change the password the next time they log in. You'll choose the email address and the type of scanner they have, and you can click on Save. If you ever need to go back and change their password, you certainly can come back out to Users, click and edit their user ID, and change and update their password. So once you set up all your users and confirm that the user rights did come over properly, um, this is the day-to-day -day thing that you would do in our system. You would go to Capture, and Capture is capturing those checks in a, in a batch or a deposit. You would choose the account, if there's multiple accounts that you would like to make the deposit to. Click on Select. Then you would then enter the batch name. Uh, many people use the date that they're depositing, but it doesn't matter to us what you choose. You don't have to put anything in there if you don't want to. Um, then we do require the total amount of the deposit or batch and how many items are in that batch. So if you want to set your adding machine so it counts how many items in the total amount, it would be a great idea. You click on Create Batch. Once you click on Create Batch and you enter all this, information, a couple icons should come up. Um, if they do not come up, if you do not see these type of icons down here, start batch scan, that means generally your Java is not up to date. And it may pop up and have you update Java, but we recommend and our vendor recommends that you actually not do it within the system, that you go out to Java's website to www.java.com and choose the free download that makes sense for your um, workstation. So once you enter Start Batch Scan, this is the point where the check will scan through the scanner like you're used to. 
it will count how many checks came through in the, in the expected deposit total amount. At this point, once that comes through, you're going to complete the batch. Or you could, I suppose, add more checks, scan more checks. If there are any problems with the reading of the check dollar amount or the MICR line, you'll get a screen that pops up like this. Um, our system has CARLAR technology, just like the system you have today. And it should try to read the dollar amount of the check. It's got about an 85% read ratio. Um, if it, for some reason, can't read the MICR line, there's something impeding the MICR line or it couldn't read it, it's going to have a question mark pop up. And all it's asking you to do is to identify what that number is and what needs to be filled in. It also may pop up, and this is more likely, um, that it wasn't 85% sure what that dollar amount was. So it may just have you confirm the dollar amount. Once you confirm the dollar amount and fill in the proper information, you want to just click on Submit. So once you, um, and sometimes you're lucky and it doesn't come up with any images for you to verify. And it sometimes will go directly to the closed batch screen. Um, if your, your deposit, your deposit definitely needs to balance. So make sure that your totals are the same. Um, sometimes your number count might be off just if you're adding an additional check or the check didn't read properly. And you can delete the check if it didn't read properly or it was upside down and re-edit it and redo the, bat, redo the batch. Um, at this point, though, if the batch balances, you can either close the batch and possibly you may want to scan more items later on or close and approve at this point. You will get a uh, notice that pops up if the batch was closed out successfully and approved. And a report will pop up for the closed batch report. It's a PDF file, and this is where Adobe is important if you want to be able to access the reports out here. You can print this off if you want. I actually don't recommend this particular report. There's a better report at the end that's the closed batch detail report, which I will show you here in a moment. However, if you did not close and approve the batch, you can actually come back out and open that batch up, and your options would be to update it, to scan additional items, you can complete it. Then you can search it. Let's say it read a check incorrectly or it had a problem with reading the MICR line. You can come back out here, search, and go into the detail of the deposit or batch and edit that check, whether you need to edit the uh, MICR line or edit the dollar amount. You can also delete the batch and then close and approve the batch. Um, if you close the batch but did not approve it at the same time, then you would go out here and click on approval and you have the options of viewing the items, look at an audit trail of it, return the batch, or then approve. Once you click on approve at either location, it, it will then send that transaction to the bank. You cannot get that back. So if there's a major problem, you could call in, we could possibly delete it on the back end. Um, so it's a very simple process, basically scan the batch, complete the batch, close it, and approve it. The next opportunity for you is to click on our reports. There are multiple reports out here um, that are available. What I recommend to my clients when I train them is that they go out and they look at the individual reports and print out reports that make sense to them. Uh, most of the customers that I deal with and recommend the approved batch detail report, I'll show that in the next screen, it gives you more detail on the deposit or batch, uh, specifics about the check, routing the count, count number, and a breakout of how many items in the dollar amount. Um, generally what they'll do is they'll print this report, wrap this around their checks, and they will store those in a secure locked location. Those checks are still live. Um, our best practices are that you store them in a locked stir, um, stored location and that you destroy those within 45 days. So many of them set up a rotating file system and destroy it um, every day uh, the last 45th day of the check. So we don't care how you destroy them, whether they're shredded or they're burned, but we, we do require you to destroy those checks. The good news is once you destroy those checks, you still have the ability to go back and look at the detail by going into our research um, part of this, this service, and that's under transactions. So you can search by a lot of different criteria, and you can pull up the check images and the batches and so forth that you, you process through this system. 
So this is the summary of features that the, the product um, offers. I think we've gone through a lot of those. Um, it does check for duplicate deposits. It will stop you from making a duplicate uh, check deposit within the system. Um, it does allow you to do advanced edits. Um, I mentioned that a lot of banks do not allow that. And we do allow it, however, we very much monitor those advanced edits to make sure that our clients are doing what they should be doing. So on the back end, we are always very scrutinizing the advanced edits that, that are made. Um, you can also export any of this information out of the system if you set that up in advance. You can also set up, I didn't mention, email notifications. So um, since it's a, kind of a two-step process of drafting and then approving, um, you can set up an email notification that there's a batch approaching cutoff, and the cutoff is 5 o'clock for the system. That has not been approved, for example, if you don't close and close out the batch and approve it at the same time. That's one of the mistakes some of our clients forget. They forget to hit the approve button, and the batch just sits out there until it's approved. Eventually, we'll notice it, and we will call you to ask you to approve it if you didn't, did not approve the batch. So once again, in summary, you'll be able to log in um, to the system beginning March 9th. We actually had a client, I think, that got some of their login credentials that wanted to log in early. But the problem is we do not want you to download your drivers for re people's banks for remote deposit capture system because we don't want it to, to cause a conflict with your drivers that you've downloaded for MB&T's product. So be patient, and please don't download this until after you make your deposit on Friday if you do get your login credentials. So there are two options to log into Remote Deposit Capture System. If any of you have uh, sat through one of our business online banking webinars, we just did before this webinar, um, there is a drop-down menu button that links you to the Remote Deposit Capture product. The other thing that many of my clients do, and I'd recommend this Either way, because if online banking's down, you can go directly to the site. Um, this HTTPS uh, summon colon backslash backslash. Um, this is the direct link to the product, and for a temporary temporary period of time, on our welcome to people's bank dot com backslash mbnt, the link will also be out there. But that will probably go away within around ninety days. Once again, don't forget our business cutoff is five o'clock to have that deposit come to our bank and just as if you had come to a teller window. Questions you may have, will I need to purchase a new scanner to access people's RDC application? No, you will not. Um, your scanners, if they are a Panini My Vision or any of those on the uh, list that are appropriate to our system, should work with our system. The only thing you will need to do is download the drivers, the universal drivers for your scanner. Will I need to update any software? Once again, we mentioned that before. It is very important that you do update Java and Adobe also if you want to be able to review or view the reports. How will I obtain the drivers? You, I think I, you saw in the demo that um, you go to documentation on the left-hand side, choose the scanner type, and then uh, do the universal drivers for that particular scanner. And then I do recommend that you go back to the workstation requirements just to make sure that your workstation has the requirements for our remote deposit capture system to operate. Um, how will I obtain the login credentials? Um, business support can get that to you or your relationship banker. Mary Jane West is the treasury management department or person in your market area. She has access to those login credentials. Our goal is to get out there to get those to you. Um, will I be able to view my past transactions and RDC history once you download our software or use our software? No. Um, so we do recommend that you print that information out if that's something that you need or if your system has the ability to export, export that out to your uh, workstation. Uh, will I receive training on people's RDC? Uh, yes, you're getting some training now. And if you would like in in-person sessions, um, please contact your relationship banker or our business support center or Mary Jane West, and we can get that scheduled for you. Uh, what does People's Bank charge for RDC services? Um, all the RDC fees will be waived till May 2015, um, and then after that, we generally charge $50, $50 per month for the remote deposit capture service. 
If you have any questions or concerns on that, please contact your relationship banker um, or People's Bank. And at this point, I'd like to open up the webinar for any questions.